Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These counts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-66. On the previous episode, the party was able to dispatch the orc warchief that had surprised Karina using an old trap on a false wall. The group discussed the potential issues of a curse listed in the notebook discovered by Cabe Silvertongue. Despite some disagreement, Fargus opted to enter the hidden tomb and test his fate. We rejoin them as the human ranger completely enters the room. Hand me a torch, please, whispered Fargus as he made his way into the new room. A new torch was lit and handed through the opening, which was quickly snapped up by the ranger. Waiting intently outside the secret chamber, the party heard the man give a low whistle as he surveyed the room. You gotta see this, guys, exclaimed the human. Cabe and Karina both headed for the opening, and the half-elf politely allowed the young woman to enter first. Gingerly, she made her way across the decapitated orc and entered the inner sanctum, quickly followed by the bard. The exclamation of the two saying, Wow! was just too much for the rest of the group to bear, and they too entered the room. As the group stood in the secret chamber, it was noticed to be about 20 by 20 foot square with a raised dais at the back. A carved stone coffin sat atop the small rise, and the room was decorated in painted murals that were in superior condition. Strange items filled the room which appeared to be mementos of the entomb's previous life. Fargus pointed out that he would maintain watch at the opening in case that there were more orcs and while the others had time to scour for items of value. While some were initially put off by the tomb raiding, they quickly changed their minds as the bard and waif found jewelry and old coins. After several minutes of searching, the group reported a significant find in valuables. Bulger then proceeded to examine the stone coffin and blew the dust off it. Thane... Draca, said the gnome as he was able to blow the dust off the lid. He further announced that the coffin lid had a few gemstones in it. The recovery of the valuables was too much for Fargus to handle, and he switched places with the former sailor, who was still concerned about the curse. With the others content in the recovery of items, they joined the human atop the dais. Looking at each other, they contemplated their options. Cabe pointed out he was going to take the jewels, as dead men can't spend them. He and Karina gleefully began to pry the bloodstones out of the lid, while Fargus and Sister Elaine examined the coffin itself. Sister Arena felt that the action was just too unpleasant and moved over to join Bolger. As the Bard and Wave finished up their work, they asked if the other pair had figured anything out. The cleric pointed out that the casket appeared to have a sliding lid as opposed to just lifting it. Puzzled, the Bard asked her to elaborate. Well, if we push hard enough here, and there, as she pointed, the lid should slide that way for the top and this way for the bottom. That is assuming the pivot point isn't broken or damaged. The group saw no need to wait and their curiosity grew with each passing moment. Sister Elaine pointed out that it may behoove them to have two people push on one side and two on the other. She pointed out that in case it got stuck, the others could just push from the opposite side and free them. Sister Irena shook her head, which Bolger noticed. You disagree? He queried the elf. She looked at him and pointed out that she was not in favor of disturbing the dead. He then quipped that he was far more concerned with being cursed. The pair nodded and returned to watch the quartet move the coffin. Cabe and Karina were tasked with pushing the top while the ranger and cleric pushed the bottom. Cape gave out a three count and the four pushed with all their might. A harsh grinding noise was heard and dust spewed forth but the lid began to swivel on the base. After getting it halfway open, a skeletal creature burst upright out of the coffin. The creature wore a tilted golden circlet atop its head and the white teeth began to chatter. The bard and the waif each fell backwards as the skeleton's arms began to reach for them. 
prone on the ground, Cabe fumbled for his weapon as Karina began to scream for him to get off of her so she could get hers. The skeletal figure began to climb out of the coffin and the room erupted in a mighty uproar as Fargus the Ranger changed directions and pushed the coffin lid back with all of his might. His superior strength and fear of his friends getting hurt gave him enough of a push to smash the coffin lid shut, snapping the dead thing in a scissor-like motion. The top half of the deceased ruler fell on the pair of prone delvers and began to climb towards their heads. As Karina and Cabe attempted to escape, a booted leg swept past their noses, kicking the skull off the spine and into the far wall where it exploded into dust. Looking up, they saw a worried elf look down at them. Lady Irena offered her hand and assisted both to their feet. Looking down on the ground, the bleached spinal column flinched several more times on the floor before also crumbling to dust. Sister Elaine had circled around to check on her associates as Fargus leaned over the stone coffin, exhausted from his Herculean effort. After a few minutes of silence, Cabe nodded to the mage. Hey, thanks, he remarked. Bulger had come over and picked up the golden circlet and twirled it on his finger before offering it to Karina. The young woman waved off the gesture and the gnome bent the small crown into quarters for easier storage. With Fargus having regained his breath, he asked the party if they wanted to try this again. This time the sailor and mage stood at the head of the coffin and were prepared to strike at anything else that may come out of it. The casket was reopened but all was quiet. The lower half of the skeleton was found as a pile of dust on a black burial cloth. The rest of the casket was empty, but Karina noticed that the funeral blanket was encrusted with smaller gemstones on its back. Guess the curse wasn't meant for us, but for old Thane Draka, was the gleeful retort from Cabe. The group gathered their composure and double-checked the room for anything that was overlooked, but found nothing. Well, I'm all for getting out of this dusty tomb, stated Sister Elaine. The others nodded in agreement, and then Karina exclaimed, Peepers! I wonder if the orcs got him in the horses. The group lost expression in their faces and quickly gathered their belongings, then began to run back towards the tomb entrance. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, Thanks for listening.